Yo guys, it is that time of the year where, honestly, the uploading with the current FIFA is just pretty slow. So, I thought I would come up with some video ideas that we could do that were pretty unique. And so, yeah, today what we're going to be doing, guys, is we're going to be taking a look at my top players that I use in each of the last couple FIFAs. So, if you enjoy the video, drop a thumbs up, man, and I'm really blessed and appreciative for all the support you guys have been showing on the channel recently. Let me know in the comments down below. Who are some of the players that you guys used the most over the last few years? All right, guys. And not only are we going to be looking at the top players that are using each FIFA, we're going to be starting on FIFA 19. We're also going to be opening just one pack every FIFA we go on, guys. We're going to open up one pack before we look at kind of my top players. Give us that retro feel. Just for the what if in terms of if we got anything crazy. And also so you guys can see the older animation. So we didn't get a boards or anything. We got a cam. Uh, and it's going to be Zahavi. So nothing too crazy there. Uh, that's our 7.5k pack we've just opened up. Hani, Ruben, P Pardo as well. And we've got Allegri as the manager, guys. So that's the pack. And now we'll check out the players. So in FIFA 19, guys, my most capped player was Michael Ballack's Prime Icon card. He got a Black Friday uh, Prime Icon SBC, I believe. And I completed it around then. Uh, it was probably Ballack's best card in FIFA ever. I played 1,200 games with him, which is just nuts. Uh, he got a decent return for me. No red cards. Four-star, four-star, medium, high. Had a shadow on him. He had all 80 stats. Um, he had some really nice long shots and shot power. Not the best agility balance. Um, and yeah, so this is, you know, really the last time I even used Michael Ballack was FIFA 19. And it's just crazy to see how many games played I have on him. My second most played with player was Team of the Year Mbappe. I must have packed him, obviously, around Team of the Year. Um, 1,170 games, so pretty close to Michael Ballack there. Four-star weak foot with five-star skills. Um, high medium work rates, 5'10", 99 pace, 97 dribbling, 96 shooting. And look, man, that's like the iconic Mbappe dynamic. He had more, uh, you know, average of goals and assists combined uh, than games for me. And he had incredible in-game stats. He got maxed out finishing, maxed out positioning, really high strength, amazing heading, 99 stamina, um, and just overall, really no flaws in this card. If you look anywhere, there's just not really a stat that's really that bad, um, even with the balance up at 90. So not surprising to see I played so many games with this card. It's an incredible looking card. All right, guys. So my third most played with player was Ken Navarro's Moments Icon. And if you actually think about the amount I probably used this Prime Icon, it was nuts. But I had the Moments Ken Navarro. I played 708 games with him. Uh, 83 pace, 98 defending, 89 physical. And uh, what a card, man. If I could think about a memory about FIFA 19, I'd probably think about Ken Navarro just jumping to the sky to win every single header. He was incredible. All right, guys. My fourth uh, most capped card in this FIFA was Footmas De Bruyne. I had 653 games played on him. Uh, he was a part of my 30-0 squad, uh, and it was just such a good card. It came out at 500K. A lot of people like didn't do it, but I knew his finesse shot was crazy. His shots were crazy, and his passing was really crazy. So he was a great player for the way that FIFA 19 really played. High, high work rates on him. Five-star weak foot, 313 goal score, 229 assists, and he did manage to get a red card. He did. I love the foot miss design from this year, too. There's something really special about it. I love the way it looks. And from what it actually looks like, my fifth most capped player was Alex Tellez' team of the season. Uh, Alex Tellez is probably the way you properly pronounce it. 72 assists, 35 goals from the fullback spot. I used him as an overlapping fullback, but it's surprising because, to be honest, he only had two-star weak foot and three-star skills, so not the most crafty fullback, but really got it done for me and obviously was the key link to using uh, Edward Millie Tao's team of the season. So, incredible card, and these were my top five on FIFA 19. All right, guys, so FIFA 20 was really the FIFA that I grinded the most. It was the gameplay that I thought had the highest skill gap, so I played a lot of this FIFA. Um, and we're going to open up a 7.5K pack. It'd be interesting to see what's going to be our highest rated if we do four FIFAs today. What we're going to get is our highest rated. This one, I think, is a boards, if I'm not mistaken. And nope, three years later in time, and I still don't know how to read packs. It's Bastos uh, from Lazio. And uh, we've also got Buffal in this pack, who I think... Potentially had five-star skills. I'm not 100% sure. We've got the Italian Pele, uh, and we've got a Newcastle center back. So not the best pack. I love the menus on this game, by the way. I think they look so clean. So, guys, my most played with player in FIFA 20 was Team of the Year Kevin De Bruyne with high, high four-star skills and a five-star weak foot. I remember when I packed him, he was three million coins, uh, 88 pace, 96 dribbling, 96 shooting, 82 defending, 99 passing, and 93 physical. Uh, what a freaking player. No red cards on this De Bruyne, but in games, literally the only thing he was lacking was the 86 uh, agility and 83 bounce, and then everything else that he had kind of going on in game just made up for it. Like, this card outperformed his stats 
so well. Uh, one of my favorite cards ever. Like, the thing about De Bruyne is always really unique is that he always has all the traits, all the animations in every FIFA. So it's what makes him Kevin De Bruyne in every FIFA. Um, you know, as I was looking through this club, it's quite interesting because I played a lot of FIFA this year. But I must have, you know, really gotten hit with a power curve where I kind of changed my team around. Because a lot of the players in my main team, which I'll show you guys at the end, are not actually like my most played with players. And what's funny is I actually have a 99 De Bruyne on the bench. So you can see that towards the end of the year, the cards just got crazy, right? This card has all 90s in statistics. All right, guys, my second most played with player was team of the year, Trent. Uh, he had three-star, four-star, and I actually primarily used him in the midfield. I was using him as a center mid. I would sub him in game. Um, team of the year was really good to me this year, but I did do a lot of upgrades. This is when upgrades were super peak, and I just did a ton of upgrades in, in this team of the year. It was absolutely incredible. It was so addicting. But Trent was like my favorite center mid to use. I would sub him or move him in game at center mid almost every game, and yeah, not surprising to see that he's my second most capped player, although a bit lower when you think about it compared to FIFA 19. FIFA 19, Yeah, I, I had less attachment, it seems like, in FIFA 20 to some of these players. My third most capped player is also another Liverpool player, and it is Robertson, guys, uh, for Liverpool. And he's a left back. He's a team of the year. High, high. So, again, we, we packed a lot of Liverpool players. This was obviously the year that Liverpool just had a crazy team uh, in real life, and, and they got rewarded by that team on FIFA, right? They had a crazy couple crazy cards in FIFA. So yeah, Robertson, third most capped player on FIFA 20 as the left back, and no surprises there. Okay, guys, my fourth most played with player on this game was Flashback Boateng. If you guys remember, this guy was out of this world. Flashback Boateng was probably the best center back in the game. He was such a freaking uh, bully there at that position. He he absolutely bodied every attacker off the ball. He was definitely my favorite card. I did invest quite a amount of like a high amount of coins in him. I remember he was not affordable. He was a couple hundred thousand coins as an SPC, which at the time in FIFA 20 was a lot, man. It was a lot to commit to as an SPC. But six foot four, medium, medium. He's got the base, great pace. 99 reactions like that was the one critique about Boateng I remember is that he was going to be clunky and he had 99 reactions 99 composure 99 strength so if you look at the key kind of stats he had key stats in many of those uh you know indicators that you want to see and then funny enough guys my fifth most capped player was actually Neuer flashback and that would make sense because Neuer and Boateng were a perfect link and I was using them for a really long period of time in this game a lot of weekend leagues I was using them. And I think a lot of the games played are a little bit lower on some of these players because Rivals was a little bit harder to play this year. So main the main part of your games were coming via foot champs. But four-star weak foot, I think I put him on the sweeper keeper instruction. And uh, yeah, Manuel Neuer. Love a FIFA where I could use him a lot. That's always super ideal. So yeah, guys, this was actually my end game team on this FIFA. And it's funny because a lot of these players didn't have more than 100 games played on them. Even this foot birthday Mbappe only had 66. This Neymar had 195. Now I will say... My actual most used player in this game was probably Headliner's Neymar. I probably had in excess of like 800 games on him, but I had sold him, right? So I'd gotten the team of the season version. We've got Ben Yedder. We've got R9. But yeah, a lot of these players are not actually in my most uh, played with players. All right, guys. So now we are on FIFA 21. Yeah, feels quite recent, to be honest. Uh, but at the same time, very far away. We're going to open up a 7.5k pack. Interesting to see all the different animations over the years. I think that is nothing. The nice part about FIFA 21 is this was the year that we had the preview packs. So we are also going to do a preview pack as we had nothing in that pack for you guys. I got you guys. Don't worry. We'll do a preview pack as well. And we'll see if we can get anything out of there. I don't know how this is going to work. Let's see. Here we go. Preview pack incoming. What are we going to get? Is it going to be special? I don't know. It's... I think it's a board. I do think it's a board. It's going to be... Uh, let's see. Illicic. No. Tadic. Tadic, Tadic, Tadic. So 83 Tadic. We on... That's the highest rate. 83. Uh, Calhoun Oglu and a Hunter. What do you know? A Hunter. I'd probably buy that pack in a normal FIFA. All right, let's check out my top five. So my most capped player on FIFA 21 was Bruno Fernandes' his team of the year. High, high, 4-4. Four, four. What a card with 90 pace, 97 dribbling. What I remember the most about him was his long shots were incredible. He also had amazing animations. No red cards for Bruno. Incredible in-game stats. 99 ball control, 98 reactions, 97 dribbling, and 98 composure. Um, amazing card. You could you could kind of flex him as a DM, an attacking mid, a center mid. He really could do it all for you. Um, and yeah, just what a freaking card, man. What a freaking card. Solid player, flair, outside foot, long shot taker, uh, playmaker. So yeah, all the traits there. And we had 582 games on him. I remember I packed him for team of the year. He was really the best player I got. I got him out of a gold upgrade. And this FIFA 21 year was the worst year of pack weight. It was the terrible, it was the most terrible experience ever. It was so bad. All right, guys, second most capped player was Team of the Year Messi. And boy, oh boy, look at that return. 481 goals, 327 assists in 563 games. Medium low, 4-4, but 
incredible experience this year with Messi. I loved him. I used him almost in every single team. I was obsessed with this card. I thought he was the best. This was the year I also bought his inform for 4 million coins, if you remember that. A long ways away, but still in my memory. Uh, and that was just an absolute pain. 95 agility, 90 imbalance. Uh, Messi was so special in this game. One club player. Uh, does he still have that trait in FIFA? I think he still did. I thought that was such a meme that in FIFA 22, uh, he still had that trait and he went to PSG. All right, guys, my third most played with player was actually UCL Neymar. I packed him tradable from Sonaldo player of the month. I totally remember it. Five star, five star for this card. And yeah, about a goal a game for me, at least cont contribution wise. Loved Neymar in this game. Always loved Neymar. Never a bad time using Neymar in FIFA. There's not much to say, and especially to get a first owner. And yeah, this is the last year we actually had these annoying UCL cards. Thank God EA removed these, because if you do remember, these were a pain. They were so annoying. And it was basically double the supply with the normal gold cards in the game. At least in FIFA 19, EA had given them all plus one, so they were at least a little valuable for like a month or two. But they, when they became the same exact rating with the same exact stats, there was nothing more annoying. All right, guys, my fourth most capped player is Flashback Elshar. What a card, man. This card was incredible in FIFA 21. Uh, definitely one of my favorite cards of all time. You know, before it was really FIFA 12 for me with Elshar, and then when this card came out, he was special, man. They had given him 99 agility. This card came out, I think, just after Christmas time, maybe a little bit earlier uh, into the spring, but was such a fun card. It really stood the test of time. He actually was good all the way until he got... An even uh, higher boosted card released towards the end of the year. So this card had some incredible memories and what a card to use. Guys, I actually messed up because this card was so low rated. But Kunde was definitely my uh, my third, I think my third or my fourth. I don't remember totally how many games Neymar had played. But Kunde is in this top five as well. I can't believe I forgot about this guy. Um, yeah, this guy was, I think, an objective early on, man. He was my center back for like four months. I loved him. I thought he was incredible. So yeah, we can't forget about Kunde. Let me know if you guys had Kunde in FIFA 21. Uh, he was awesome. And also, guys, just a little bit of an honorable mention goes out to Kleber. Kleber, you know, Kleber was really there. He was that guy. Uh, this was one of the most overpowered showdowns of the whole year. This was the year where everybody was using fullbacks as center backs. So obviously, Kleber was super, super good. And I'm not treating you guys to a pack in FIFA 22 because you guys don't even want to see that anymore. But my most played with player in FIFA 22 is definitely Prime Pele. This was so nice to get, man. I was sending absolutely every single, like, repeatable icon, uh, icon pick this year. And to actually get Pele was absolutely out of this world. 333 goals, 303 assists, and 677 games. Considering this game is so defensive, I mean, that return is crazy. And I've used Pele in so many positions, right? So... Really, my, my first experience with Pele for a full year and really feeling like he is that guy. I felt like this FIFA, he was absolutely so good. Um, so, yeah, awesome to get him. And hopefully, I pack him in FIFA 23. All right, guys, Marquinhos is at second with 624 games played. We played a lot with Marquinhos in this game, and he was incredible. This is one of the, the team of the year cards that really stood the test of time. I think you could put him in a team right now, and he'd still be really good because he's got base 90 pace, and he's got incredible defending stats. Just a little bit weak. But that was really the only flaw with this Marquinhos. So I'm not surprised to see him at my number two. Guys, I may or may not have messed up. Okay, I totally messed up. I can't believe I forgot, man. I looked through the whole club as well. M4 Messi was my number one play with. So we got to bump Pele. We got to bump uh, Marquinhos down. M4 Messi, 903 games played. Packed him uh, during the Black Friday promo. What a player, man. What a player. Spent a lot of coins to get M4 Messi. I did 150 Team of the Week packs and I finally got him. Love this card. Amazing year with Messi. Believe it or not, my second most played with player was actually Roberto Carlos. I know he's blowing my mind. I'm choking on FIFA 22. I'm messing it all up. But 853 games. Amazing left back. Loved uh, his passing and defensive ability. And just loved how he felt on the ball, man. It was the first year I really kind of got to use Roberto Carlos. And such an icon and legend in real life. So it was awesome to use him. Okay, guys. And then someone else that's kind of over that 600 game mark. But I don't know how it fits in with Marquinhos and Pele. I think it was maybe potentially a little bit more than Marquinhos. But definitely less than Pele. 611 games. I played with Vinny's Player of the Month. Awesome card. Uh, really expensive, but was really happy to get him. I feel like these wide players this year were so important to get. They were really fast. So yeah, Vinny Jr. was my, you know, that's my top five, guys. Top five on this game. So it actually looks like the games played were the most on my uh, FIFA 19 cards, which is just an interesting thing. It's an interesting thing to think about. I think EA have kind of gotten a lot better with this power curve and kind of restricting how the teams kind of go and build throughout the year. Guys, thanks for watching another video. If you enjoyed it, drop a thumbs up, and we'll do more of these retro-type videos. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace.